everyone. My name is Greg Hansen. I am a software developer at Solo.io, and I have been working on the Istio project since it started. This is a lightning talk, so let's see how much stuff I can cram in here. First off, I am sure a keynote has already covered this at least twice in the conference so far, so I think I can skip this one. At this point, I'm assuming you have Istio deployed in your environment and all your services have been injected with an Istio sidecar. Also, that your application knows to wait for sidecar networking to come up before crash looping because of an external service dependency. One of my areas of expertise in Istio is understanding how various resources generate the appropriate configurations, which are supplied to the Envoy process running in every Istio proxy sidecar in the form of LDS, RDS, CDS, etc. This means that as part of my role at work, a lot of the questions that get directed my way are along the lines of, I created this virtual service destination rule or service entry, and my requests are failing. Over the past year, those debug sessions have involved failed communication with external services a lot. So today, I'm going to share some of my debugging tips along with a few common mistakes I have seen regarding external service traffic. First things first, Istio CTL proxy status or Istio CTL PS. Looking at your service entry may be your first instinct on a failed request, or maybe the virtual service that is supposed to be directing traffic from your sidecar to your dedicated egress gateway. But I always recommend Istio CTL PS, because if something is broken in the environment to begin with, the sidecar and gateway in question may not be receiving the necessary configs from the Istio control plane due to a misconfiguration or conflict. Also, stale in Istio CTL output can also give you a pointer to the troublesome CRD in question. LDS for listeners is going to be impacted by the port and protocol in your service entry, as well as any virtual services with a TLS block. RDS for routes is gonna be impacted by any virtual services with HTTP routing logic. CDS for clusters is gonna be impacted by destination rules. And always check Istio CTL Analyze. We are improving the tool with every release. There may be nothing to debug if the analyze tool does it for you. Next is access logs. Please enable your access logs when requests start failing. A failed log message from your application reveals little, while an Istio access log reveals all. OK, not all, though, because then I would be out of a job. Starting in 112, Istio introduced the telemetry API which gives users a way to turn access logs on or off on a workload basis, regardless of whether they were enabled or disabled by default during install time. If you don't see an access log on a failed request or you're getting a failed to connect error message in your app, chances are your LDS listener is configured for the wrong port or protocol. So check your service entry port and protocol. Access log configuration is stored at the listener level. This means if Envoy doesn't have a listener with the correct port and protocol for the request in question, it may not generate a log. If you have service entries and virtual services for a host and port, and you are seeing pass-through cluster in an access log on one of your requests, this means Envoy does not have the correct configuration for that traffic. And if you are routing all of your external service traffic through an egress gateway, make sure you check the access logs on the sidecar and your gateway. I mean, is the sidecar even sending the request to your egress gateway? Check the upstream cluster name in your access log entry. This leads me to my next point. If you're not confident with fields and access logs, don't worry, there are tools for that. OnGuard, take an access log entry, pipe it into the OnGuard tool for processing, add in JQ, and you get a pretty printed JSON representation of the log complete with labeled field names. It even includes a special flag for parsing Istio's custom log format. But if you're like me, sometimes you still need to refer to Envoy documentation to find out what the heck a URX response code means. So I wrote a cleverly named UI tool called OnGuard Viewer. You get the process JSON output from OnGuard, but you can also click on the JSON field names and get a description for those access log fields pulled directly from Envoy's docs. Now, you have an access log with some populated fields and you're wondering why Istio decided to route the request the way it did. Time to start looking at the Envoy config. Now, a raw Envoy config dump is a lot to take in. 
thousands of lines. But you can use Istio CTL to break that into smaller chunks. If you need to trace through a request, leaving a sidecar, start at the listener. Listeners, if you are doing any TLS or SNI based matching, make sure the values you expect to be there are in fact there. Routes. If you are routing any specific host and a service entry to an egress gateway, do they appear as expected or even at all? Clusters. Are you sending traffic to your service entry or egress gateway as TLS or mutual TLS? Are there custom certs? Endpoints. If you have endpoints defined in your service entry, do the IP and port appear as expected? And secrets. If you have custom certs specified for mutual TLS, make sure that they are loaded and not expired. And don't forget to check the same things if you are routing through an egress gateway. A 503 from, with a UF response code from the Envoy proxy could mean there is a port protocol mismatch between what the sidecar is sending and what the egress gateway is expecting. Also, not all information may be returned at the top level of the Istio CTL proxy config command. So start adding dash o JSON to some of your commands. But wait, that's a lot of JSON coming out of my Istio CTL PC listener command. Don't worry, there's a tool for that too. You can parse your JSON output directly from the CLI with Envoy CTL, or you can upload it to an Envoy UI tool and view everything there. Now, I'm sure I'm starting to get close on time, but I promised some common mistakes, so here we go. I cannot stress this one enough. If there is a service entry with protocol TCP, unless you provide IPs or cedar blocks in the addresses field, these service entries will capture all traffic on this port, regardless of hostname. There are no hostname headers for traffic defined as TCP in Envoy, so hostname does not matter. Also, make sure you are not scoping your sidecar too much with a sidecar CRD. Sidecar CRDs are designed to scope or limit the amount of configs that get pushed to a particular Envoy sidecar with performance in mind. If you're not seeing host names for services in another namespace or the hosts in your service entry from any of the Istio CTL proxy config commands, make sure they are not getting filtered. Also, per the docs, protocol TLS implies the connection will be routed based on the SNI header to the destination without terminating the TLS connection. This means that with the service entry above, the sidecar envoy will not terminate the initial TLS connection originally captured from the application. So if you specify an additional TLS policy and a destination rule for traffic from your sidecar to egress gateway, the traffic will be double encrypted. If your egress gateway or the external service itself is complaining about malformed request bodies or unexpected characters, the traffic may still have a layer of encryption applied to it. And I think that's about all I have time for. Here's a little cheat sheet for all the links I mentioned during the presentation. And of course, feel free to reach out to me on Istio Slack as at GI Hansen. Thanks, everyone, and happy debugging.